All right, it is Hello Again Wednesday. This is Hello Again Wednesday number 25. And so, man, just welcome to those that are checking us out here, checking me out, I guess, and checking out the things I'm going to be talking about today for just a few moments on Hello Again Wednesday number uh, 25. Man, if you can uh, lay out some comments down below, I'm going to be asking some things down the road. And uh, man, be sure and, and lay down a comment. And if you're watching later on on maybe uh, Facebook, keep commenting. Or if you're watching on YouTube, either one of those, hey, hit a following and hit a notifications. And then you'll know, hey, this is when, man, I'm going to start talking about stuff. All right. And so a couple of weeks ago, I'm just going to jump right in. A couple of weeks ago, I started talking about better together. In fact, I actually, um, as a pastor here at Culver City Church of God, um, I did start a, a, a little series and I'm going to end it here on Mother's Day coming up uh, Sunday, but it was about better together and some of the things that went with it. And um, I'm going to just, um, if you'll let me, I want to share a story of someone who uh, is, tr that was, that I believe truly better and they seek out another to be better with. And um, this is what our goal should be, to not only be better together, but be better together and seek out others or another to be better with. And uh, this individual I'm going to talk about uh, did exactly uh, that. This past weekend, and please don't think of this as a downer because it's just, it's a good, a good inspiration, at least to me especially, and to others, I know for a fact. Um, this past weekend, I did a funeral for uh, my closest friend right now. Um, and now Connie's my best friend, okay? My wife, Connie's my best friend, but my closest friend here in Culver City uh, was a man by the name of Patrick. And uh, so I, I, he uh, caught the virus, COVID-19, and man, I thought he was getting better, 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 better. And then all of a sudden, um, after coming off the respirator and stuff, he was getting better. And then all of a sudden, boom, in, in a phone call, I had sad news that uh, my close friend had passed away. He's supposed to be uh, 53 um, coming up real soon, but instead um, we uh, have laid my closest friend to rest. Anyways, uh, and I might read some of this so I don't forget some stuff. Maybe one of the, the best attributes, I believe, of being, being better together is humbleness. And Patrick, my friend Patrick, was very humble. He was always looking out for others, to be better with others. And this man, when I mean he was looking out for others, he would give you money. He would give you tools. He would do work for you. He would go out of his way. He was always calling. I mean, there was things that, and if he called you and you didn't answer, he was calling someone else. He was always, always looking out. And he had this humble, humble heart. At the memorial service that we held this weekend, um, I told a, a whole bunch of stories about my friend. One of the stories was how one day when I went to Patrick's house, um, Patrick often would bring out a bowl of water to, to wash my feet. Um, he loved the story of Jesus and Jesus and his disciples, Jesus' humbleness with his disciples and uh, how Jesus would watch out for one another, uh, watch out for others, how Jesus would then also wash another's feet as such as the disciples. And so he tried to model that in his humbleness. So he would invite you into his house and say, hey, sit, 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 you know, offer you some water or juice or something. And then he would... Um, on a lot of occasions, bring that bowl out to, to uh, wash your feet. Um, after I told that story because one of the things that took place one day when he did it is I made the mistake of wearing a, a sock that was whole, had holes in it, and uh, he took my socks and uh, threw them away and then gave me a brand new pair of socks along with washing my feet. I told that story, and after the service, a young man, very young man, came up to me and said, that uh, Patrick had done the same thing with him. And he never thought about it because it only happened like I believe once or twice, but he never really thought about it. But when I told the story, it came to his mind, but he told it in, in a, the story in a different way. Uh, my friend, friend Patrick, um, especially after drinking, 
uh, could be very lo a very loud individual. He uh, sometimes also could be a very angry individual. And one night after drinking, he had had an argument with this same young man. And then all of a sudden, the next morning um, or the following day or so, when he saw the gentleman again, uh, he had such uh, remorse for what had happened. He had uh, he was humble in, in, in his heart for what had happened. And uh, he comes up and humbly apologizes to this young man over and over. And he asks the young man to come in. See, that's how Patrick was. He would not only just say words, he would try and have actions that followed it. You know, trying to, would you like something to eat? Would you like something to drink? Inviting this young man in. And the young man said he did the exact same thing. He brought a bowl over and he cont and he asked to wash my feet in asking for forgiveness in that humble state of mind is what my friend was. I thought, wow, that's really cool with this young man. He now has a great story of the same humble man that I know have known for years, Patrick. Um, one of the things though, the young man at this funeral services, funeral service, as he's talking about that story real quick, he begins to tell me the story of how he actually met Patrick for the first time. And this story is better together when you're connected to another. Okay. So bear with me for just a moment because this young man, he had only been in America for three days. He had been up here, uh, made his way crossing over and made his way to uh, up here near uh, Culver City on the far west side of Los Angeles. Been here three days, was able to um, acquire some finances and, and an apartment. Okay. And so he goes up to the grocery store that's, you know, we have many, but there's one that's kind of close by. And by close by, I mean this, about four or five very, very long blocks um, from his apartment. Okay. And so he's buying groceries and he comes out of the grocery store with about eight to 10 uh, uh, shopping bags, the kind, you know, the plastic where you can actually load up like five and five in each hand. And he realized that it was a much longer walk. And as he told the story, um, the bus, um, he had missed the bus. And here, if you miss the bus, you got to wait a long time. So he decided to begin to try and ask someone for a ride. And I, not only was he in America for three days only, but he spoke no English. And so here he is in a very, and our shopping centers are, are big, in a very crowded grocery store parking lot. He's trying to somehow convince someone to give him a ride home. And so uh, as he is looking, he's turned down multiple times over and over. No one would help him. And I, I kind of look back and I wonder if maybe that's due to, remember the old phrase, uh, stranger danger? Uh, maybe that's why people were turning them down or maybe they just were selfish or maybe they just were in a hurry. I mean, there's many, many excuses, but he got turned down multiple times. And as he got turned down multiple times, uh, he's still walking around in this in this uh, this parking lot and walking around the parking lot. He comes across Patrick and as he comes across Patrick, um, you know, he, like I say, he can't speak English. Patrick can't speak his language. Um, and somehow Patrick understands that this man needs a ride. And he, he Patrick doesn't hesitate then. He opens up his vehicle. He loads the guy's groceries into the vehicle. And then he they together, they're doing all this gesturing. And he's trying to explain, show me the way to your place. So they pull out of the grocery store and they begin to head on what I call south. And what well, is south? They begin to head south down one of the busy streets in our neighborhood uh, that goes by our neighborhood. And as he's driving down, he comes to one light and Patrick begins to slow down to see if this guy is giving any hand gestures, making, wanting him to turn. No, nope, just keep going. So Patrick continues on. He's about to come up to this next light. And the, uh, the young man starts, you know, hey, this is where you turn, 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 but not saying it, just gesturing. This is where you turn. And so Patrick slows down. He's kind of looking because you can only turn right. Okay. And so he turns right and he goes about three driveways up and the man's whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. And he gestures to turn left. And would you believe that that young man, three days in America, 
met up with another young man with a humble heart, and they, the two of them live in the same apartment complex. And so what takes place is you have someone like Patrick with a humble heart. And I'm going to tell you what, I could just see Patrick. This dude had a smile a mile long and it would just light up his whole face. And I could just see Patrick smiling as he realizes a young man he is helping, not knowing any language, lives in his apartment. And they too did, they bonded, bonded so much that um, we shared a time together uh, saying goodbye uh, to our friend. One of the things during that memorial service, though, is not only that young man, but many others from that apartment complex. It's not, I mean, it was just small, but many others from that apartment complex who have known Patrick on his ups and downs um, came out here. And one thing that was so easy to tell them, because I've stood out there in his driveway a few times, and he would look after individuals, open the gates for them and stuff like that and call them by name. He learned the names of his neighbors. Did you hear that? He learned the names of his neighbors and he cared for them. He offered them stuff all the time. And one thing I told them on that uh, Saturday was, you know what? Patrick considered many his family and he treated them very well with a humble heart. Better together, connected to another, is a better life for everyone here today. Soon this disconnection that we are in uh, with the virus and everything, soon this disconnection from one another will end. Are you ready to be better together again? I am. So, some of, so what is, I told you I was going to ask you to comment stuff. So what is some of your better together stories? A couple weeks ago or something like that, I asked you, you know, what made you happy? I had, you know, some good things. Uh, we're about to try, uh, you know, I, I see a lot of things more and more that uh, this is really cool. This is what makes me happy. We're going to see if an orange dreamsicle cheesecake homemade from scratch that Lauren has made. We're going to see if that makes me happy that was one of the last week's one but what is some of your better together stories i would love i'm really interested i would love to hear your better together stories better together stories inspire others so don't just tell them to me tell them to others they inspire others better together stories brings us together maybe even closer together so please share them and most of all, better to get, be better together now. Make an effort. See every situation where you can be better together. Tonight, the Bible study that we have here at Culver City Church of God is going to be a little bit different. I am the substitute teacher of the afternoon. In fact, it starts in about uh, three and a half hours, 4 p.m., uh, Pacific time. I'm going to be picking up where Pastor Mark has uh, left off for uh, this one week, um, letting me substitute for him in Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to then work our way forward just as uh, he has been doing. Um, this will probably be, um, I have to say it this way, because uh, I know that his, his wife and them have helped up with um, um, I, I let them do the Bible study, which is awesome. I'm there. I'm involved uh, and, and taken in uh, as Pastor Mark's been leading us through, especially this time, uh, Matthew. Um, but she's been running, running the Zoom and now uh, but uh, they won't be here tonight. Um, so I'm going to offer my Zoom account. So if you would like to Zoom on the Bible study uh, tonight, I will shoot that little code that you need to uh, go to the Zoom and you put in that passcode or whatever it is, or I don't know how, I can't remember, it's been a while, um, but I'll give you that passcode to get into uh, my Zoom account and we will have Bible study 4 p.m. Pacific time. And so just ask me for the code on Facebook or on email, especially at Culver City Church of God at yahoo.com. And I'll get that out to you. As always, better together. Check out a church near you and see what they're doing tonight, what they're doing today, what they're doing this afternoon, maybe even this week or this weekend. 
be better together with them. Be that inspiration that is better. And you know, as I'm typing my stuff out, because I do look at notes and stuff sometimes, I was looking at this one. And as I was looking at my, you ever type mistakes? Uh, I'm right here. Be better together with them. Be that inspiration that is better to gather. Rather to gather, better to gather. Better to gather with who you gather with with your church community this week, especially it has been great to be with you guys again. Um, Ready? Better to be with you. I will see you next Wednesday on Hello Again Wednesday. And so I hope you all have a great week. I did the intro correct this week. I'm going to try and intro us out. Transition. (laughs) 